Well, on Repel, we need to work our way around a knot. Here's a procedure to do just that. Hello again, I'm Jason. If we damage our rope on a climb, we are taught to isolate the damage by tying a knot that keeps the damage from taking any load. Well, if we finish that climb and need to repel off of our objective, we still need to keep that knot in place, but we also need to be able to get our repel set up past that knot. Here's a way to do it. In this circumstance, we are on an overhanging repel, so we cannot use our feet to simply unweight the rope. We are on a double strand repel, so if one strand is under tension, the other strand also needs to be under tension. And we also have our standard setup with the auto block backup in place below our repel device that is extended away from our harness. You can check out a short video we did about the benefits of a repel extension. There's a link in the description. We want to stop our initial descent when there is still some distance, maybe 30 centimeters, between our backup hitch and the knot. We're going to need that distance in order to continue our descent that will weight the waist prusik we are about to tie. Now we need to transfer the load from our existing repel system to a new system, so we need to build that system. We start, though, by creating a catastrophe knot below us to ensure that a failure at any of the steps we are about to take won't result in us falling to the ground. Here I am tying a double-stranded clove hitch attached to a large locking HMS carabiner that I clip to my belay loop. I want some slack between the damage isolating knot and the catastrophe knot because that slack is where I'm going to reattach my backup auto block and my repel device. It's time to make that waist prusik, so I'm pulling a double length runner and using it to tie a clem heist. I make sure my bar tack is out of the way and then I wrap upwards with both strands before pulling the lower longer loop through the upper shorter loop. Then a quick pull test. It's worth noting that we wouldn't want to use Dyneema for a friction hitch that would have the rope constantly running through it like a backup for our repel. Dyneema has a lower melting point than other materials. But in fairly static applications like this, it can work just fine. You can also see that if my repel extension was too long, I would have a hard time with this sequence. So you can take a look at last week's video on three different ways to create a repel extension so that you can choose one that is right for you. There's another link in the description. Now I can attach the other end of the waist prusik to my harness by clipping it to my belay loop. Three things of note here. First, I want to clip this beaner closest to me so that it can't press up against my auto blocks carabiner. If that auto block beaner gets pinched in place while I have the waist prusik weighted, I may not be able to remove my auto block. Second, I'm using a clove hitch again here. It is far easier to untie after waiting, and it is also adjustable, which I care about because three, I want to make sure I have some slack in this waist prusik so that it is possible to unweight it when I later transfer my weight back to my repel device. Right now though, I need to push that clem heist up and take out all of its slack. It's time to lower myself some more until the waist prusik takes my weight and the repel device goes slack in turn. Now I want to move that original auto block backup hitch to a position between the isolating knot and the catastrophe knot. Having done that, it's time to also move the repel device to a spot between the friction hitch and the isolating knot. We want to now cinch that system up close to the knot to reduce the distance we need to lower ourselves before the repel device takes our weight. Okay, now it's time to get the weight off of our waist prusik. To do that, we need an alternative that can take our weight. It's time to add a foot prusik. If I have another double runner, I could use that. I don't, so I'm using a quad runner, which I always have with me for things like slinging horns or making multi-piece anchors. Again, I make sure the bar tack is out of the way and then I can tie a clem heist. I want to have some distance below the waist prusik so that I have some space to move my waist prusik down when we start to use the two prusiks to descend. To shorten the sling to an appropriate length, I can add an overhand on a bite while clipping the carabiner I was carrying the sling on through the heart of the knot. That will make this knot easy to untie after I weight it. By standing into my foot prusik, I can unweight my waist prusik. Now I can slide that waist prusik down, making sure I don't have it overlap the foot prusik. I can sit my weight back and reweight the waist prusik. That lets me move the foot prusik down to just above the isolating knot. Standing back up in the foot prusik, I again unweight the waist prusik and slide it down as far as I can. At this point, when I sit back, my repel device should be engaged, and it is. So it's time to take apart my foot prusik and re-rack it, and I do the same thing 
with the waste pressing. The final step is to remove the catastrophe knot, and now I am back on Repel. Have you used a self-rescue technique in the field? Tell us about the event in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can check out a video I referenced about different rappel extension setups, or you can check out our entire rock climbing series. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.